All right, hey everybody. Um, so I just picked up this ice auger because uh, I want to uh, get out and do a little ice fishing. So I picked this up, brand new. It's eight inch diameter. It's a uh, Swede bore brand. It's like um, Canadian Tire. Um, but basically, I don't want to. I don't want to hand auger it. I want to be able to connect it to my one of my drills and um, you know just for ease of, of going through the ice. Um, so basically, uh, what I'm dealing with here is this opening um, that would receive the, the manual handheld piece of the, the auger. And I'm going to um, try to make an adapter that can go in there and fit into my drill on the other end. So um, you can actually buy one of these things at Canadian Tire, the adapter for this. It's about 16 bucks. Um, they don't review very well. Uh, pretty much anyone who left a review has talked about how the adapter will break and uh, which often leaves them in a situation where uh, the auger um, separates from the drill and then goes through the hole and down into the water bottom of the lake and then uh, no more auger. So um, I'm not going to buy that. I'm going to make one uh, instead. So I've got this, this old um, bolt here. It's out of a a Ford F-150. It's one of the um, bolts that shackles the uh, the suspension to the the body of the truck. So it's it's um, it's quality hardware. It's probably like a grade nine or ten bolt. So um, the diameter is actually pretty pretty perfect to go in there, especially when you get up to the the flange on this bolt here. It's just a little bit wider than the threads, and it it actually fits really really nicely in there. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cut the head of this bolt off and this will be the end that I insert into the auger and then I'm going to use a portion of the threaded section of this bolt to um, create the piece that's going to go inside my drill. So uh, that's the plan. I'm going to use a reciprocating saw to cut this off just to reduce the amount of noise and the mess that goes into this. And uh, in terms of how I'm going to bring this down, well, um, you know, I might end up just using my uh, grinding wheel on the bench and um, doing the best I can to bring it down in an even way. But, um, you know, that'll all depend on how big of a diameter my drill re will receive in terms of how much goes into that. But anyways, that's the plan. And, you know, it'd be awesome if we could get out and do some ice fishing today. Um, it's a beautiful day. It's not super cold, cold enough to see your breath, but... Uh, um, I think it's probably going to heat up by noon so that it'll be pleasant out on the ice. So let's get this thing going. All right, so that's barely doing anything. Um, uh, probably because my, my blade's a little tired, but uh, I'll switch blades up and see if I can um, start cutting a little bit better. If not, uh, I'll have to lop that off with a grinder. Um, I kind of wanted to get this, this uh, part of the bolt as far down here as possible because I considered tapping an additional hole through the auger shaft just for some extra strength and as a bit of a back, backup plan because, you know, I mean, obviously this isn't going to break. The weak point is going to be this, uh, this, this pin right here that's going to fasten them and, you know, this could shear, I suppose, and if I had another one in there, I'd feel better about it going through the ice, uh, not going through the ice. obviously why you wear glasses when you do stuff like this. I was cutting it in sort of an awkward way because I, I wanted the the debris coming off the cutting wheel and the bolt to be headed this way and um, you know not towards myself but uh, yeah so a, a few times there I slipped up and I could feel quite a bit of shit hitting my face and uh, here's a piece of the cutoff wheel that I just found in my sweater um, and I, I felt like I was getting peppered with some pretty heavy stuff there but um, you know, the last thing you want is one of these things to break apart when you're using it and then come up and uh, smoke you in the face. It kind of feels like I might be 
bleeding a little bit. I don't know, but uh, I'm glad I had the glasses on. So anyway, the bolt head's off and can move on to the next the next step. All right, so I'm going to, uh, right now, my, my next plan is to uh, grind down the threads here. And I've already started a little bit. So you can see that there's just some traces of, of the thread there. And I'm using them as a bit of a reference because um, I don't want to grind this down in a way that's going to be out of balance and it's going to cause vibration uh, through this adapter piece from the drill into the, the auger. So I'm using these to, to try to grind it down evenly. And when I'm finished, I'll probably uh, lop off the, um, the piece uh, so that I've got a, a not super long piece to go into the drill, but long enough that... Uh, you know, it's the, the drill's not sitting right on top of the auger. So here we go. All right, so I'll have to do uh, a bit more fine tuning with this uh, portion of the bolt <clears throat> to make sure that it can fit inside of my drill. Um, but the next step is I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off this, uh, this remaining section that I don't need and uh, try to keep the, the uh, cutoff wheel disc spatter out of my face. All right, we're getting there. Um, it'd be nice if I had a lathe that I could, uh, you know, actually make this this adapter um, perfect, but I don't. So um, I'm using what I got, which is I think probably most of our uh, situations around here. So basically, uh, I just finished um, getting the hole the right size, and I, I wanted to be pretty careful that um, the hole in this adapter was very close to the same size as the uh, the shaft on this um, this locking uh, nut right here, or not locking bolt. Um, so I've got it the right size, and uh, as you can see. Um, it goes in there and it's pretty good. There's very little play right there, which is what you want. Um, so I'm going to slide it in here and see how it works. But um, something that's really interesting, I don't know if you can see my breath or not, but um, when I was using the uh, drill press there to, to go through this, um, you know, normally I'd have uh, some cutting grease on hand and you know, be really careful about my bit temp so that I didn't chew up a bit, but um, I, I tested it several times on the way through and um, it's so cold in here that the metal and the bits and everything just seem to be uh, maintaining its, its own appropriate temperature and I didn't have to mess around with any of that grease or anything like that, which was awesome because it's messy and it's a sort of a it's like a hold up in the process so the bits cut really well through the metal and that was really awesome um, okay so that's in there seems pretty good tighten it up and throw it on here and hopefully uh, hopefully we're ready for some ice fishing after this
All right. So let's see. Seems good. Um, one of the annoying things about this drill is, I think maybe because it's a hammer drill, when you let your finger off the trigger, the uh, the armature on this mechanism just comes to a dead stop. And I've actually, my first Milwaukee drill that I bought, I was using a, um, a concrete mixer and, and, you know, running it and then abruptly stopping it and actually sheared the armature in this thing or the shaft that connects the motor to the the chuck here and um, I had to take it back uh, I'm sure there's a good reason why why it does that but um, it's a little bit of a nuisance especially in this kind of an application where you're you're turning a pretty big um, bit uh, those abrupt stops don't um, there's just so much momentum here that it it puts a lot of stress on the inside of the drill but um, looks like we're good to go here and uh, hopefully uh, we can catch some fish this afternoon we'll see Awkward.